This week on Life on Jupiter, a common question about aluminium boats is answered. How noisy are they? Get an idea of the noise level. And don't miss Sundowners, where we discuss the seaworthy sailboat. <laughs> After a long day of avoiding the shoals, we were happy to drop the anchor and explore an atoll. I'm the queen! <laughs> I think it's deep for me. Whoop. More than moving your arms. <laughs> wow. Awesome. Hold it. It's your hands. Is it moving? Slowly. So, we do have iguana tracks here, lots of them, but where are they all gone? Whoop, there's a little guy. <laughs> it's chameleon. <laughs> it's running like a chameleon. Oh, what a night. Sometimes you just pick the shittest of anchorages. <laughs> no sleep, pretty much no sleep, I think. Um, just jostling around. Because uh, the Bahamas are so flat, the wind just pumps across and it just doesn't get blocked. And the islands are so flat that it doesn't protect you from the wind at all. We've anchored away from the island because it's so shallow. Anyway, all night, bloody tiller bars banging, dank, 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 dank. The main, the boom is flopping around. <laughs> the, we're just doing this. Do, 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 do. Ah, oh, but I'm glad we're not in a mono, huh? <laughs> Be 
you rolling. Hey y'all, we're cruising along here at 10 knots in 20 knots of breeze and I've had a lot of people asking whether aluminium boat is louder and more noisy than a fiberglass boat in a, in a seaway so I thought I'd take you downstairs and you can have a listen there Please excuse the mess uh, I'm just boiling the kettle, but uh, so this is in the galley, and get an idea of the noise level. Pretty quiet. I mean, it, my noisiest thing <laughs> is the gurgling sink. Um, up in the head here, it's a little noisier because this is the bow, so you can hear. You get some. You know, waves coming over on the hatch here. You get a little pounding, a little bit of washing machine up here. And if it's really bouncy, you know, you've really got to hold on when you're sitting on the throne. So not so noisy at all. Um, this is a messy spare cabin right now, but it's the bridge deck cabin. If you're sitting up here, well, you get maybe you get some slamming underneath here. But it's not so noisy. But so the noisiest place on the boat is actually the cockpit, sitting at the helm because of the the wake. So I hope that gives you some idea of the noise levels on an aluminium performance catamaran. It's a bit of traffic here uh, in this little passage across the Long Island. It must be the main thoroughfare through uh, this part of the Bahamas. Ship just passed before heading to Baltimore. Uh, we got one coming up now, which is actually a collision risk at this stage. He's showing we will pass 100 feet. <laughs> so um, we've got the uh, VHF ready, and we're going to have to talk to him soon. We can't see him yet. He's still 10 miles away, but. Uh, we will be passing in 27 minutes, so he's doing 18 knots and he's a thousand foot long. So I think we want to miss that sort of a ship. So of course we'll pass behind, no, no, ch no chance of uh, gambling and trying to pass in front. So that's what we will tell him when I talk on the radio shortly. Mull experience, mull experience. This is Jupiter 2, Jupiter 2 on 1 6. Should we go 0 6? Mull experience, Jupiter 2 sailing vessel. Uh, we will pass behind you uh, just to confirm. Roger, 
Soldier, you pass my after, so I'll just maintain my course and speed over. Confirm, thank you. Jupiter 2, returning 1 6. Alrighty. He can calm down now. They do, you know, this is traffic, um, and any collision is a problem. So, uh, you know, he was about to change his course and speed to not be a conflict with us. So it's just polite to, you know, we can change our course and avoid him much more easily than he can and costs us no money where it would cost him money. So that's what we do. And now we'll alter course to starboard. Just 10 degrees should do it. So we altered our course to starboard here and you can see the AIS shows this red danger area and that's it, that was our original course. If we'd continued, that means collision here. So we turn to the right a bit. He will go in front and uh, no risk of collision anymore. So we're approaching mole experience now, but look, there's two more after him. It's like playing Frogger. Anyway, no problem. So he's gonna pass within half a mile of us and you can see him. These two ships in front of us there got Filipina cruiser. Princess wants to say hi. <laughs> I was go, go. Oh. When they finished, jump in. Hello, Ma Kababaya. This is Jupiter 2. You're doing the answer for me. Yeah, Anna. Yeah. This is Princess from Jupiter 2. I just heard you talking Tagalog. <laughs> Filipina po ako. Opo, sa husband ko po. Oh, yeah, nag-ano lang pala kayo. <laughs> uh, ano pong ginagawa niyo po dyan? Uh, ito, uh, uh, mag-share kami ng ano, mais sa uh, Jamaica. Papunta kami sa Jamaica. Pupunta po kami sa Jamaica next time. Pero papunta po kami ng US after Bahamas. Oh yeah, good. Ano po? Good. Good sailing po sa inyo. Uh, safe, safe po sana. Kayo din po. Pumakam salamat. <laughs> okay po. Ingat po kayo dyan. Saan po kayo sa atin, ma'am? Taga Manila po. Ay na, ma'am. Marikina. Sa Quezon City na ako, ma'am. Wow! Classic? Quezon City. Quezon? Yeah, ma'am. Sa Sikatuna. Ah, okay. Nice to meet you pa. Ano pong pangalan niyo ulit? Ah, uh, Calvin. Ah, uh, I'm Princess po. Princess. Okay po, ma'am. Princess. Special akong, ano ma'am, ah, uh, pati dito ma'am. Pascual. So, oh, si Pio Pascual. Hindi ko po alam, baka screen name lang po ni Viola Pascual. Ano? Kamukha ko kasi yung mami. Ah, kamukha niyo po si Viola Pascual? Yan, ma'am. Pwede ang pogi niyo po. Ang masyado, ma'am. Captain po kayo dyan or you're on just on watch? Second officer, ma'am. Happy you, ma'am. Live on Jupiter. Facebook mapal. Sige ma'am, mapapalo namin kayo para makita namin yung mga adventures nyo. Thank you po! Oh ma'am. Sige po ma'am. Another subscriber! Thank you, bye bye. Okay. Oh my god. That's my first time.
times it's all gone right here. Oh my god. <laughs> it's nice to talk with another Filipino. Yeah. Sometimes I don't know how to talk to Tag Tagalog anymore. <laughs> yeah. oh my god. You only speak Jamie. Huh? Yeah. Ah, yeah. I only mm. talk to you. <laughs> Ah, cheers guys. Welcome to this installment of Sundowners. So we've been talking about uh, the areas that you need to address to get in order to go cruising, yeah? So the first one was money. The second one we talked about time. This week we're going to talk about the boat, the seaworthy vessel. Now, when choosing a vessel, there aren't that many requirements. Size is not that important. I'll always remember and be inspired by uh, an Aussie who built an aluminium, yes, <laughs> aluminium, 12 foot monohull, which he sailed around the world. He built the boat himself, sailed it around the world, and um, perhaps he still holds a record. His name is uh, Sergi Testa. And his boat was called Acroc Australis. And it's, it's in the Brisbane Museum. And just made me realize if you have a seaworthy boat, size is not relevant. Only for comfort. So let's try and break this down. Uh, I do tend to ramble on and I'm going to try and keep things succinct <laughs> and timely. Let's break this down into three areas. Critical requirements, important requirements, and nice to have requirements. So I want to refer you to some videos that are made or back uh, a year or so ago called the Ocean Crossing Checklist. In those videos I refer to two golden rules. Number one golden rule for successful and safe cruising is keep the water on the outside. This one is relevant to a seaworthy boat. Obviously we do our best to stop new holes being made in a boat. We don't want to hit things that's going to make a hole. We don't want to hit rocks, reefs, logs, containers, other boats. We don't want to hit anything. But that's got nothing to do with the initial seaworthy boat. That's just our seamanship. So let's talk about the holes that are already in your boat. The hatches, companionways, doorways, windows, vents, seacocks and through hulls and prop shaft seals. These are potential areas for water to come into your boat. Some of them much more volume of water than others such as windows or uh, the companionway. Just make sure everything seals and you can follow the golden rule. Keep the water on the outside. Let's say we can't follow that rule. For some reason, we are unable to keep the water on the outside. Seaworthy boat will have ways of removing that water. Bilge pumps, a bucket, sponges, um, bilge alarms. Also, if you happen to hold the hull at sea or lose a hatch at sea, break a port light at sea, you need to have thought of some measure to stop the water coming in. Whether it's a big piece of a plywood and some sort of uh, through bolt and a brace to fill and cover a hatchway, or whether it's uh, an old sail, small headsail, storm sail, that you can rig quickly underneath your boat to prevent water coming in a hole in the bow. But these are not prerequisites for the boat itself. This is your preparation for going to sea. Alright, let's get on to important requirements. 
Important requirements, not so critical, but important. That is, a reliable engine, some spare parts, a reliable and strong rig. You don't want that thing coming down on your first blow and hitting your boat, putting a hole in it. You want to be able to rely on your rig, steering and backup steering. Make sure they are in order. To stop being blown up onto a lee shore, you want some good ground tackle, a good anchor, good chain, or at least nylon road. Make sure that you have that gear in order. And of course, some way of navigating. Whether you choose to use a paper chart and a compass, like they used to, or you want uh, some more modern electronic gear. Important stuff to have for a seaworthy sailboat. So finally, let's talk about the nice to have requirements. I think I, I'm going to summarize that by saying redundancy. Have redundant gear for your critical and your important requirements. Have, some, have another one in case it breaks. To explain better, check out this video, which is Essential Tips for Successful Cruising. So hopefully that gives you some idea of what to look for in a seaworthy vessel and how to prepare it for sea. Cheers, guys.